would like to tell you what God really wanted before he created the entire system. God said, I was in the hidden treasure. I loved to be known. Therefore, I created. So the whole purpose of the creation of the world is that God wanted to be known. And there must be somebody there who will want to know you. If there is nobody, who will you be known to? Therefore, out of necessity, the creation has to come into existence. Because there was, there was nobody. God would know himself. He wanted to be known. So to know God is called Mu'arifa in Arabic. To know God. Knowledge pertaining to God. The essence of God. That is Mu'arifa. And English, Gnosticism. Like I said, when God said, I was in the hidden treasure and I wanted to be known, so I created. This is Hadith-e Qudsi. Kuntu kanzan makhfiya. I was in the hidden treasure, I wish to be known. So the entire purpose of the creation of this universe is that God wants to be known. In Urdu and Arabic, we call it Mu'arifa, Marfat. In English, we call it Gnosticism. So the purpose of creation is Mu'arifa. What is the purpose of creation? Mu'arifa. What is Mu'arifa? Gnosticism. But what does it mean? To know the person of God. So this is the purpose of the creation. For this reason, God created the entire system. What's the purpose? Monifa. Gnosticism. God wanted to be known. Therefore, he created. So he created us so that he may choose some of us to know him. That's the purpose. Now, the next sentence is very profound and deep. Give me all your ears. This is the purpose of creation. Mu'arifa. This is the purpose of creation, right? And in order to know him, we need the knowledge of all five celestial souls. So when Adam came, only one portion of the Mu'arifa was introduced to humankind. Then came Abraham, yet another portion of the knowledge of the person of God was revealed upon humanity. So, which will mean, when Abraham finally came into this world, people were able to know God more in comparison to those at the time of Prophet Adam, who were only able to communicate with God with the help of the spiritual heart. Because he brought yet another knowledge, knowledge of the soul. So after the arrival of Abraham, now you have two portions of Gnosticism. Now you have two portions of Mu'arifa. Now you have two portions of the knowledge with which you can know God. Then came Moses. God granted Moses the knowledge of the soul of Sirit, the secrets. Now, with the help of three different types of knowledge, obviously, the proportion of Gnosticism increases. Now, three portions of Mu'arifa are revealed. Then came Jesus. Jesus was, was granted by God the knowledge of Khafi. Now, with the help of this knowledge, humanity advanced even further in pursuit of knowing God. More and more. So this building of the purpose of creation, Mu'arifa, is almost complete. Only one portion is left. Then in the end comes Prophet Muhammad with the knowledge of Akhfa. And this is what God said. Today, I have completed your religions. Yawma akmaltu deenukum. This is the body of the deen. Mu'arifa. And it was divided into five different portions. Which simply means is, no, not with one prophet you can obtain the entire Mu'arifa of God. You have to 
be able to receive the spiritual benevolence and grace from all the messengers. This is why as a Muslim you believe in all the messengers. But the five souls in the human breast, each one was granted with one type of knowledge. So as a result of which, every religion which was established, it had two aspects. The outer, zahir, and inner, batin. When both types of knowledge was intact, and people of a religion practiced both types of the knowledge, outer and inner, the religion was good. But since the spiritual system is destroyed in any religion, that religion becomes a set of rituals. 500 years ago, 600 years ago, Muslims were really great. They were intellectuals, they were you know, medicinal scientists, they invented surgery, medicine, Ibn Sina, they were best travelog, Ibn Khaldun, Ibn Battuta. All these individuals were part of Islam at one time in history. But then what happened today? Muslims have no respect in the entire universe. Why? Because the knowledge of Batin, the interior aspect of the religion of Islam is lost. We only emphasize and stress on growing our beard, holding a rosary like Imran Khan does. It doesn't help. Because you're supposed to remember God even when you're sleeping. When you sleep, this rosary in the hand will fall down. So this is the purpose of the creation, the building of Mu'arifah. This is God's purpose. This is why God created Hindu and Muslim and Christian and Jews. Why? So that you know Him. Mu'arifah. And the knowledge of God was distributed among five messengers. So that all approach all messengers and respect all of them equally. The fall of Judaism lies in extinction of the knowledge of spirituality which was given to Abraham. Since that knowledge in Judaism became extinct, I mean, people do talk about Kabbalah and, and different other forms of spirituality, but it's not about just the, the bookish knowledge. It's about the practical. Since the, the knowledge of mysticism, since the spiritual system in a religion is destroyed, the religion is destroyed. I give you an example of Islam. How many centuries have gone past since we have seen a figure like Khwaja Gharib al-Nawaz, Lal Shahbaz Qalandar? They're all prehistoric. Saints, you know, Data Ali Hajwari is more than 1,000 years old. Khwaja Gharib and Nawaz, many hundred years. Ghaus Yazam, at least 1,000 years. Do we have any such spiritual dignitary in our times? No. We only have Mullah and Malvi. Or maybe the fake Sufis. Gaddi Nasheen, fake Sufis. who have no connection with God, who will give you a shujra'i nasib, their spiritual family tree. You read it and God will love you. So how a simple man, Ali Hajwari, became Data Sahab? How Moinuddin Chishti became Gharib al-Nawaz, Khwaja ul-Hind? How Abdul Qadir Jilani, a simple man, turned out to be Ghaus Azam, radiallahu ta'ala. This knowledge of spirituality, yes, Sufism. Yes. Kabir Das was a simple man until he met his guru who taught him the spiritual secrets, enlightened his soul, and then he became a mighty figure, spiritual figure. Why there are so many different denominations in Islam today? Whereas according to the Quran, the Quran very strictly commands all Muslims to keep clung to the robe of God, Hablullah, Wala Tafarraku, and do not divide into different sects. But ask yourself, how many of you and your mullahs and malvi 
are true when they recite this ayah and yet they say I'm Sunni, yet they say I'm Shia. If you believe in Quran in which God said, hold fast my robe, wala tafarriku, and do not divide in different sects. When you're Mullah and Malvi in different mosques, Barelvi, Shia, Sunni, Wahhabi, Salafi, when they recite this ayah, how sincere they are with themselves. You're reading this ayah, and at the same time you say, MashaAllah, I am Sunni. Alhamdulillah, I am Shia. What? This is totally against to the message of God. Do you really believe in this book? Hold fast to my robe. Habr Allah ko masbuti se tham lo. Now, remember well, the body of the purpose of creation is Gnosticism, Brother Steve. And the knowledge of the person of God. And God divided this knowledge in five different sections and gave this knowledge equally to five grand messengers so that there is no monopoly, so that all human beings should respect all messengers, all the prophets. Bringing light, love, and peace in your life.